frequent and regular pre-flight inspection is preventive maintenance. In a pre-flight inspection, where do you start? At the tail, then around to the wingtip? Or do you start at the nose and circle to the tail? Circle, that's the idea. Have a system, then you're less likely to forget something. But first, work safely. Are the chocks in place? Is the switch off? Another thing, check all the papers required to be in the airplane. The logbook, some note by the pilot may guide you in your inspection. Owner's certificate, airworthiness certificate, and a record of the last periodic inspection. All here and in order, no special notes from the pilot. So, replace the papers in the cabin and start your inspection. The landing gear is a good place to begin. The landing gear, or for that matter, the whole plane, is no better than its smallest part. And the landing gear on a light airplane gets pretty rough treatment. So check every bolt and cotter pin, structural members, shock absorbers, wheels, and all around the tires. A blunt tool, rounded for the purpose, tells you how bad a cut this is. If it gets any bigger, change the tire. For now, a note to look at it next inspection will be enough. Light planes often fly from sod fields. Grass might catch in the hydraulic brake lines and loosen them. A loose and leaky line will cause uneven braking action. While checking hydraulic brake lines, see that all nuts are to the rear or down and safetyed. Hard landings tend to loosen both the lines and the bolts in the fittings. Rock the plane and watch the landing gear bolts for signs of looseness and wear. If every bolt looks secure, make sure each has a cotter pin to keep it that way. Now the left side of the landing gear. Damaged members must be repaired, so Watch for cracks at the wells. Check along the tubing near the well, too. To ease the strain on the landing gear, shock absorbers must be taut and whole. Take a look at them. Even if the cords look and feel all right, check further. If the cords are really tight, the wheel will leave the ground as soon as you lift the wing. These shock absorbers are still okay. So, replace the covers, check the left wheel, and you'll have finished inspecting the landing gear. Your inspection form is a double check. Check everything you've inspected on the landing gear, and you can begin on the wing assembly. Start with the lift struts at the fuselage. You must inspect struts, control cables, pulleys and ailerons before you can check them off on the form. All of the nuts holding these parts must be safetyed. If a cotter pin is broken, like this one, replace it with a new one of correct length. Bend the ends over properly with your pliers so that the nut will be sure to hold. Now this nut is safetyed. The cotter pin will keep it from coming loose. Check all the safeties. See that the pitot tube is clean. And as you go along, continue checking the aileron cable. 
inspect the bolts and fittings at the aileron control pulley. The cables should show no signs of chafing or corrosion and there should be no broken strands. A rag will catch on them and show you if there are any. Be just as careful at every other point in the aileron assembly at the horn, turnbuckle, and hinges. The aileron is a control surface and must move freely and smoothly. After you've made sure the aileron and its controls will move smoothly and are in good condition, make a quick inspection of the top and bottom surfaces of the wing. Thump the fabric for the sound of tautness Feeling along the leading edge, looking down the rib stitching, checking the tautness of the fabric and feeling the ribs will tell you if the internal wing structure is sound. Continue your inspection by checking the covering of the fuselage. A small hole could wait for periodic inspection for repairs. Make a note to check it next pre-flight inspection. It, it may get larger. Fuselage covering gets its worst treatment underneath. Clean it, inspect it, and you're ready to check the inspection form to see what must be examined on the tail surfaces. The slightest damage here must be repaired immediately. These are control surfaces, and safe flight demands that their fabric covering must be whole and sound. Thump the fabric to test for tautness, as you did in the wing. Fittings must be secure and safetyed. Brace wires must be drawn up taut and true. They're likely to hit small objects in rough fields and throw the tail out of alignment. Your rag will tell you if the rudder cable is frayed. Since the flight of the airplane is largely directed by the rudder and elevators, their structure must be sound. Covering and brace wires must be in good condition. Hinges must work smoothly and easily. The fabric on all the vertical tail surfaces must be sound. An unsafetyed bolt or clevis pin may fall out in flight and result in complete loss of a control surface or violent flutter which will throw the airplane out of control. All nuts and turnbuckles on both the rudder and elevator control assemblies must be properly drawn up and safetyed. The tail wheel assembly is important in ground maneuvering. Use your flashlight, check the safetying of the nuts, and inspect the leaf spring for cracks. Now that steering spring will have to be replaced. You can do it right after you finish the inspection. Make sure your rudder has not been thrown out of alignment. And uh, better make a note now to replace the spring later. Cracks or wrinkles in the fabric may be the sign of a break in the internal structure of the rudder, elevator, or fins. Inspect the right side of the tail assembly just as carefully as you did the left. See that the brace wires are secure and properly taut. Check the elevator hinges. Remember that movement should be free and smooth. Look for a bent turnbuckle and proper safetying here. This one's okay. If this inspection plate is not transparent, 
remove it to make an inspection. Take a good look at the stabilizer adjustment assembly to see if the worm gear and casting are in good condition. And once again, be sure the bolts are safety. When you finish your inspection of the tail surfaces, go back to your form and check off the tail surface items you've just inspected. Make sure you've done a good job on the tail and haven't missed anything on your way around. Complete your inspection of the fuselage fabric and you can finish the wings by inspecting the right wing just as thoroughly as you inspected the left wing. Covering sound, control surfaces and assemblies secure and freely movable. Internal structure, solid. No signs of structural weakness or surface damage. Alignment, leading edge straight and in good condition. Control cables, freely movable and unfrayed. Struts, secured and safetyed. All parts of the wing are in good condition. Back where you started, you can check off every wing item you have inspected. Make sure you haven't forgotten anything. Before entering the cabin, check your repair notes. Two items for the next inspection and one for now, the tail wheel spring. Replace the spring before you check the rudder controls in the cabin. A missing spring will affect rudder movement. The cabin door and window are part of the airplane surface. They must lock securely, fit smoothly. Hinges must be cottered and the doors freely movable for emergency exit. A full fire extinguisher and first aid kit must be firmly attached in the airplane ready for emergency use. Safety belts should be firm and in good condition. Inspect the rudder cables for wear and check for fraying with your rag. A loose belt can foul the controls. Test it for security. Then buckle it neatly across the seat. No objects should be loose in the cabin. The stick and rudder pedals are the center of the control system. Check them carefully. Try the ailerons. Both should move smoothly and easily. The elevators should answer the stick without lagging or binding. The rudder must move freely when the pedals are moved. If the brakes are not firm and even, the airplane will tend to ground loop when the brakes are applied. Crank the adjustable stabilizer through its full range to check for binding. Check the throttle for smoothness and spring at extreme positions. Try the fuel shutoff valve. While cleaning the instrument panel, see that the cover glasses are tight, no dirt is underneath, indicators are at the zero mark, and Operational limit markings are plainly seen. Test the altimeter adjustment by moving the adjustment knob. Try the cabin window. See that it slides easily. Clean the cabin enclosure inside and out, finishing up with the windshield. A transparent cabin top extending back from the windshield, 
may strip off in flight if it is loose at the leading edge. See if it's secure and your inspection of the cabin is complete. Check off your interior fuselage items and you've completed your pre-flight inspection of the airplane. When you've given the engine as thorough a pre-flight inspection and have checked off all the items that apply, you can turn over to your pilot an airworthy airplane. <laughs>